All right, demagnetization. I think this one's pretty fun. Um, so the fault is that the magnets lose their strength or that the magnet magnetic shape changes. So let's say I want my magnet shape, like how I see the magnet flux in the air gap to be a sine wave. And now it's kind of a pump wave, like that would be changing the magnet shape. The flux profile doesn't look how we expect it. And these can be symmetrical, where all the magnets are demagnetized equally, or asymmetrical, where one magnet is demagnetized more than the others. And when I talk about demagnetization, I kind of need to, to go down a little bit of the, the magnet rabbit hole. Um, so I hope I don't lose anybody. But if we look at a magnet, this is magnet field intensity. This is kind of the current coming from the stator versus the strength of the magnet. So if I have a permanent magnet, this is how strong it is. And if we put negative current into the air gap at that magnet, we're going to make that magnet look weaker. And we have this normal operation point here where, all right, if I put negative 500 amps at that magnet, it's going to decrease from one per unit to 0.5 per unit. But then it'll recover when I take that current away. So we have that recovery. This is normal operation until we hit this knee point. So if I put 800, negative 800 amps in that air gap, I'm going to push that magnet beyond that knee point, and now I can't recover. And if I push it far enough, I can then recover back to this lower magnetic state. So we can actually change how strong that magnet is on the fly. We can use this to our advantage for things like field weakening, but we can also go too far and turn our rotor into a paperweight. So this is what, when I say demagnetization, it's really making that magnet so that it's, it's a paperweight. It's no longer a magnet. And that's a catastrophic failure for a traction motor. So what causes us to go beyond this knee point? What causes us to create that critical failure demagnetization? Well, overheating, it's called the Curie temperature. The Curie temperature for a neodymium magnet is, you know, 100 between two, between 100 and 220 C. If we get to these temperatures, we're having a really hard time, you know, keeping that magnetization. We have conflicting magnetic fields. If I put too much negative current at that magnet, I'm going to cause demagnetization. And if we have stator faults, funny enough, these stator faults can cause very large negative currents and create demagnetization. And what's the effect of demagnetization? Well, torque ripple, we kind of have no longer have that profile we're expecting. So we're gonna get dynamic torques. Um, if anybody was betting how long it would take me to say torque ripple, that's, that's how long it took. Um, we're gonna have reduced power. We no longer have all that, that flux coming from the rotor. So we're not gonna be able to produce as much power. And we're gonna have unbalanced line currents and voltages. We're going we're gonna to see a, a pretty dramatic change in what that back EMF looks like and therefore what our voltages and currents are that we're experiencing. So this one is really bad because we're, we're losing power. We're losing power to the machine. And as we'll see later, a little bit of demagnetization makes a big change in the power output. 